All right, folks, welcome back. It's time for our next 224 Valkyrie video, and it's time to say goodbye to our 6.5 twist upper. This was an upper that White Oak Armament had sent as a loaner, just so I could do a little bit of testing and compare the 6.5 twist to the 7 twist in the Valkyrie. This 6.5 twist barrel has shot pretty darn awesome with just about everything we've thrown at it, but our testing so far has really been limited to the heavy bullets. So today's video is going to be all about the light bullets. We want to see if the higher velocity, lighter bullets are going to survive this extremely fast 6.5 twist. I want to cast an extremely wide net. So I have pulled out 14 different bullets between 50 and 63 grains that I want to shoot today. Starting on the left, we've got the Hornady V-Max. Actually, this is the Z-Max, but it's the same bullet. It's got the green tip instead of the red tip. Next is the 50 grain Nosler ballistic tip varmint, then the 50 grain Sierra Blitz Varminer. This bullet in particular, these Blitz Varminer bullets are designed for medium velocity. So I think this 50 grain guy might just come apart on us. I don't know. The next bullet to the right is the 52 grain Sierra Hollow Point Boat Tail Match King. And right next to it is a 53 grain Sierra Hollow Point Flat Base Match King. Next to that with the red tip, the 53 grain Hornady V-Max, then the 55 grain Nosler Varmageddon, then the 55 grain Hornady V-Max, the 55 grain Sierra Blitz Varminer. This is another one of those Blitz Varminer bullets that I'm afraid are gonna come apart on us. Next to it is the regular 55 grain Sierra Varminer, then the green tipped 55 grain Sierra Blitz King, the 60 grain Nosler Ballistic Tip Varmint, and then the 63 grain Sierra Varminer. So that's a pretty good bullet lineup, right? That's a pretty good send off here for our 6.5 twist barrel. Hopefully this will give us some idea as to how the light bullets perform in it. So for this test, I decided to go with Hodgton Varget as the powder. And consulting the Sierra load data and the Hodgton load data, I decided to split these 14 bullets up into three categories. We've got three 50 grain bullets, and with those, I want to shoot 27.5 grains of Varget. The next group is from 52 grains all the way up to 55 grains. So that covers the vast majority of our bullets, and we're going to shoot those with 27.0 grains of Varget. And then the two heavy ones, the 60 and the 63 grain bullets, we're going to shoot 26 grains. So that's the basic premise. I'm just going to load up five rounds of each of these bullets with a generic charge of Varget, and then we'll just go shoot them and see what happens. Now, a lot of people are gonna hate this test, I think, probably. There's a high likelihood that there are going to be bullets that don't shoot very well, but with a little bit of load work up, or maybe a different powder, they would shoot just fine, right? The, the better path forward here would be to, to take each bullet and do a separate video on each one and really dive in and look at it. I don't have time for that, right? I need to get this gun back. I just wanna cover a bunch of ground. This seems like fun, you know, shooting 14 different bullets. So here's an actual list of the bullets. And I'll include the manufacturer part number for each one because rattling off all those names was a bit confusing. You'll notice we're heavy on Sierra bullets here, right? We're shooting seven different Sierra bullets. And that mainly comes down to the fact that Sierra has the best Valkyrie load data. So it was an easy choice. I dipped way deep into my stockpile of bullets here couple of these are some old hand-me-downs, like these, these have got some age to them. The bullets are still in good shape, I'm sure they'll shoot just great. But this is the 50 grain Blitz Varminer. But I did try and sprinkle in some variety here, where possible. So with the, with the Sierra bullets, we get a recommended overall length, right? Since we've got load data. So overall length on these is going to be all over the place. There were some bullets that I had a recommended overall length from a load data source, but some of them I didn't. I measured each one in the upper to see when the bullet hit the lands and what our you know max overall length was. I found that some of my max overall lengths were shorter than the recommended overall lengths, like the 55 grain Blitz and the 55 grain Varminer and the 55 grain Blitz King. All three of those, if I would have gone with the recommended overall length, I would have been jamming into the lands of the rifling. So if you're loading up light bullets for your Valkyrie, be sure to be careful about that. Make sure that those recommended overall lengths are actually going to fit in your gun. You might need to go a little bit shorter. 
But hopefully on the screen here, I've got uh, the max overall length for each of the bullets and the test overall length I'm gonna go with. The shortest is 2.1 inches. The longest is 2.2 inches. So all of them are well short of magazine length. And a couple of them, especially the shorter ones, I went a little short on the overall length just to make sure that I had enough of the bullet down into the case mouth, you know, to have enough neck tension on that bullet. So that's pretty much it. Let's see, we're using the Federal GM 205M primers, which is what we've been using recently in the Valkyrie. The brass is Starline brass that has been previously fired. And I've actually taken these all the way to the point where I'm ready for bullet seating. The cases are cleaned and resized and trimmed and chamfered and primed and I've weighed out the charges. So not much left to do here, except head over to the bullet seating die. First is the 50 grain Hornady Z-Max or V-Max. 2.1 inches is our target overall length. Right now we're at 2.263, so I need to go down 163 thousandths. I am using a Hornady custom grade die. So let's dial in 163 thousandths, 50, 100. All right, so I went to 160, so we should still be about three thousandths long. Yep, still, uh, still eight thousandths long, actually. Let's seat a couple of them. There's a 2.107. So I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and come down eight thousandths, and I'll run these two back through, and that should be good enough. 2.102. 2.100 and 2.099, so perfect. Hit the last two of these guys. Yep, 2.101. Good, so those first five are done. Look at these cute little guys. Yep, looking pretty cool. So now I have to back out the seating die and start all over. Actually, this next guy is the 50 grain Nozzler Ballistic Tip Varmint, which is a pretty darn similar bullet, so I probably didn't really need to back off that far. And our target with this guy is 2.160, 54 thousandths long. Okay, let's see how that does. 2.160, right on the number. The next guy is 2.161, so we're good. So that's basically all that's going on here. Yeah, there's the Nozzler Ballistic Tip Varmint. Pretty straightforward stuff. So I'm just gonna repeat this 12 more times. And if anything interesting comes up or if I run into any challenges with some particular bullet, I'll be sure to turn on the camera and let you know. But I mean, otherwise, let's just go ahead and get out on the range. Okay, folks, it's time to get started. Give our six and a half twist upper a proper send off here. We've got a target at 100 yards. The dots are one inch in diameter. This is a white oak armament upper receiver. And it's got a 6.5 twist barrel. I think this is 20 inches, or is it a 22? I'll confirm that and put it here on the screen. Yeah, I think it's a 20. I got too many barrels on the brain, man. I'm gonna shoot most of these through my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor with the Magneto Speed Chronograph. But whenever we get to those Blitz varmeters, I wanna take it off. I think those guys are the most likely to come apart on us here, and I don't want them to send shrapnel through my suppressor. All right, let's get started. First up is the 50 grain Hornady Z-Max. The gun is zeroed for the 90 grain Sierra Match King, so hopefully our point of impact isn't too far off. So this is the point when my target camera decided to stop working. All it recorded was this first group. And I've been sitting on this footage for two weeks trying to decide what to do. Should I just reload everything and reshoot the, the range stuff or try and salvage what we've got here? I think I'm gonna try and salvage it. So from this point, let's just do like a group review. And we'll start with this first group you just watched with the 50 grain VMAX. That was a 0.728 inch group, pretty good start. The velocity was 3140 with a 6.0 standard deviation. That's pretty weak. And you're gonna see that trend continue all the way through. These are basically 223 velocities. 
So the brass, all day today, the brass was fine. So probably could have gone a little bit higher with our charge weights. And there probably was a better choice to be made as far as powder. You know, Varget just wasn't the right choice to get impressive velocities. So this trend will continue. So great start, 50 grain VMAX, feeling confident, moved on to the 50 grain Nosler ballistic tip. And the groups just got better. So this is a 0.522 inch group. Velocity was 3111 with a 5.7 feet per second standard deviation. So after this uh, 50 grain Nosler, the next is the 50 grain Sierra Blitz Varminer. This is the one that is labeled for medium velocity. And while our velocities aren't crazy high, by, by this point in the range trip, I realized like, yeah, these, these velocities are pretty weak. Still, I was afraid that the twist rate would just be spinning these guys faster than they can deal with. So I went ahead and took off the suppressor. Here's the group we shot, a 1.926 inch group. And I didn't get any velocity data because the chronograph was connected to the suppressor. Now, what I probably should have done was went ahead and screwed on a muzzle brake or something else that might have helped, you know, keep these groups tighter. But I'll tell you, this is by far the worst group we shoot today, 1.926. I think a big part of it was just because it was without the suppressor. But most importantly, they all held together. All five made it to the paper, and that's not a terrible group. So back to regular bullets, the next is the 52 grain Sierra Match King. Yeah, have a look at that group. 0.376 inches, really good stuff. Velocity 3,033 feet per second, standard deviation 11.9. I was extremely happy with that. So the next one was the 53 grain Sierra Match King. The group opened back up just a touch, 0.715 inches. That's not terrible. The Velocity was almost the same as the last, uh, 3,030 feet per second, 10.4 feet per second standard deviation. Not too bad, but it just looks bad compared to that 52 grain Match King group right beside it. All right, after that guy was the 53 grain VMAX, 0.912 inch group, 3,039 feet per second. Not a whole lot to talk about here, kind of pretty mediocre. So let's move on to the 55 grain Nosler Varmageddon. Things tightened up nicely, 0.497 inches, 3,014 feet per second. We are really, really shooting some good groups. And that's, that's why I've been so mad about losing the target camera footage from this, because this was going to be a really fun range session to share with you guys. These groups were, almost all of them were excellent. So let's move on, look at another excellent one. This is the 55 grain Hornady VMAX, 0.590 inches, 3,038 feet per second. And then next was the 55 grain Sierra Blitz Varminer. This is another one of the ones, me, the medium velocity. I think I showed it to you earlier, right? But yes, yeah, it's right there on the box. Blitz medium velocity. But after realizing our velocities were so low and seeing the uh, 50 grain version hold together and shoot a halfway decent group, I decided to just go ahead and leave the suppressor on. So the result was this 0.879 inch group, 2,958 feet per second. Really good standard deviation there of 3.8. So that was pretty cool. Both of the Blitz Varminers survived our 6.5 twist barrel. So next is the 55 grain Sierra Varminer, just the regular old Varminer, 0.636 inch group, 2973 on the velocity. Next is the 55 grain Blitz King, the guy with the tip, that guy shot a 0.816 inch group at 3,048 feet per second. So similar performance with that kind of group of Sierra. The last couple groups have all been Sierras and they all they shot pretty well, but they weren't quite packing them in there like some of the others. And speaking of that, let's move on to the 60 grain ballistic tip varmint. This is the bullet that Federal is using in their factory ammo. And it shot a 0.336 inch group, really excellent stuff. Our velocity wasn't really anything to brag about though at 2866 and a 10.7 feet per second standard deviation. But the group was pretty sweet and Last up with our light bullets was the 63 grain Sierra Varminer. It shot a 0.875 inch group at 2,844 feet per second. So that kind of wrapped up all of the light bullets. And at that point I was feeling good, feeling good about the way the gun was shooting. I had 15 rounds loaded up with the 90 grain Sierra Match King, kind of some leftover ciders for this gun. And I decided to shoot a 15 shot group with those guys. And this is what I ended up with. So those are the last 15 shots I'm gonna shoot with this upper. And it's into a 0.723 inch group. And those were loaded with H4350. So looking at the whole target, man, this was an exceptionally good range day. Like th these are 
some truly awesome groups. Like this, this is one of the best targets I've ever shot here on my channel, I think. So this certainly answered the question for me as to whether a 6.5 twist barrel will shoot light bullets okay. Assuming you've got a good barrel or upper like this white oak armament, I think the answer is yes. I wish we had the opportunity to maybe push some of them a little bit uh, faster in the 6.5 twist, but it's okay that we didn't. Because the way I look at it, like it shot just about all of them really well. You can't tell me there's not some of these bullets that will continue to shoot all up, all the way up to the very max velocities you can get out of the Valkyrie. I think it'll do just fine. So the Valkyrie in general seems to do a pretty good job of kind of dual purpose work here. All these varmint loads with lighter bullets and also the long range loads with your 90 and your 95 grain Sierra Match King and your 88 grain Hornady ELD and all of those cool heavy bullets. So that's pretty cool. So I have to say a huge thank you to White Oak Armament for loaning us this upper to do this 6.5 twist versus seven twist comparison. It's been eye opening and I don't think it's as big a deal as some people are making out. The seven twist white oak armament barrel we've got, it's, it's stabilizing the 95 grain Sierra Match King and the 90 grain Sierra Match King, no problem. However, if I was buying today, I would absolutely get a 6.5 twist if it's available as an option for you. We just shot through a big pile of extremely light bullets and the 6.5 twist did awesome. So what's the downside of a 6.5 twist? You get more confidence with your heavier bullets that you've got enough twist, but you're still able to go all the way down to 50 grain varmint bullets and shoot great groups with those. So I'm failing to see the advantage of the seven or any disadvantage to the 6.5. So this is probably gonna be my last Valkyrie video for just a little bit. We've still got the 18 inch one in seven twist white oak armament barrel that we're gonna be testing in the future. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little bit burnt out on 224 Valkyrie in general. The primer pockets in the brass only last a couple firings, which is a huge deal for reloaders. I, I would be interested to see like uh, loads like today's loads, lighter loads, faster powder. I'm sure we probably didn't blow out the primer pockets very much today, but if they can't stand up to the big boy loads with the heavy bullets and high velocity, then it's really a, a, a huge drag on this cartridge. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of a break. I mean, th this isn't the end of, you know, Valkyrie here on my channel, but maybe in the coming months or maybe at SHOT Show, some cool stuff will be released or some new bullets specific for the Valkyrie or maybe some breakthrough will happen on brass and I'll be here to test them. But until then, it's time to move on. And I actually, I think I'm gonna go back to the 22 Nosler next. A viewer sent me some of the six millimeter Hager brass that you can use in the 22 Nosler with a 6.8 SPC bolt like our 224 Valkyrie. So that should be coming before too long. Is that about it? I think that's pretty much it. I'm sorry this video turned into a slideshow instead of a video, but it is what it is. So, all right, that's it for today. I will see you guys next time.